time once again to slip into your camo, grab your bow, and join us out in the field for another episode of the Up North Journal, presented by PSE Archery. The Up North Journal crew is knocked and ready to rock for another exciting adventure. So let's step outside and hit the trail. This episode is brought to you by PSE Archery, Black Eagle Arrows, Cabela's, Antler Action, Spot Shooter Archery, Tom's Custom Turkey Calls, Family Traditions Tree Stands, and Badass Slingshots. Welcome back. Another episode of the Earth Journal. We're in the cabin. Um, I fixed the lock on the door, Dan. Did you? Yeah, yeah I seen um, where you broke in. Yeah, you should have because, you know, that better not happen again, young man. I told you I left you a key. Well, you, you, yeah, sure. <clears throat> Under a rock. <laughs> well, that's right where I put you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, you had my mic shut off, but we won't talk about that. Oh, yeah, we come back into the cabin. And who was in the cabin last? You. And whose mic was shut off? Your. You shut your own mic off. Because so. you told me to shut it off. Yeah. Oh, blame it on me. I will. All right. All right. But we are back in the cabin. Yeah. yeah. And it is October. Yeah, we should be in the woods. We're not. Yeah, and we're not. And I'm not, weeks. I'm not happy about it. I'll Hopefully, a good Lord willing, creeks don't rise. I'll be up next weekend. Creeks don't rise like they did down south with that huge hurricane. You know what, man? Um, give me a quick shout out to everybody down there. It's that that was just hell, man. It's uh, ain't no, it, nothing good comes out of that stuff. I don't see anything that comes out of good out of something like that. That is just phenomenal. I could not imagine it. You know, today's Sunday. It's been going on a week. This stuff is. I mean, it's that hurricane's been rolling a week. You know, we we complained uh, the previous week the weather we had right about being rainy. Yeah, yeah. Well, they had rainy and flooding. Yeah, and power Dest- and the destruction whole, the whole nine yards. The whole mess going out. But yeah, I can't imagine that. But definitely a shout out to everybody down there. Yeah, and nobody I know personally, um, you know, suffered I- I- any ill effects from that. But uh, but I know a lot of people did. Um, you know, and I know there's people listening that know people. Um, a friend of ours that we talked to on Facebook, Josh, yep. out in Idaho, uh, his sister and his mom and them, I think, are still down there in Florida. Uh, they got hit, so. Yeah. And we're thinking about everybody down there. But, um, yeah, it's uh, it's it, we've had some good weather here, you know. We had frost last night. I saw that picture you took of the, the, the back roof? porch. Yeah. Was that the roof? Yeah, it was the roof, yeah. yeah. Frost on the roof there? Yep, I yeah. saw that, and I'm like, yeah. We turned the heat on. I, I turned it on this morning. <laughs> It's like, yeah, okay, it's going to be about that time. Yeah, yeah, so. But no, we're not in the woods yet, but uh, like I said, I hope to be. I was going to try to get up yesterday for a quick jet up and back, but, uh, you know, we. Uh, I was working Friday night. Normally get out early, but uh, as you know, yeah. I was yeah. shooting video for the high, uh, for our local TV station. I was shooting the high school football games, and every game in the whole county went into a rain, a rain or a lightning delay. Lightning delay, yep. Yeah. You're not getting there. The, so, we had, I left after the second one. I couldn't take it no more. So. I got out late, and uh, I decided, no, I'm not going up north. I just chilled yesterday, watched some football, roll tide. Did you watch or catch any of the, uh, was it the North Carolina State game? Who are they playing? In Notre Dame. No, I did not. The epitome of Matthew raining down on a football game. Really? It was a pour down the entire game. Okay, so they played, okay, North Carolina, that was a home game, I take it yeah. then. Okay. Um, I know they postponed the LSU-Florida game. They did postpone yeah. that one, but they kept that one going, and I tell you what, it was, <laughs> it was water. A lot of water. All game long. And it was coming down sideways, but they still played. Well, think about all those guys that's been out hunting already, you know, tree stands and stuff and uh, and getting out there down south. I know. You know, I kind of wonder what, you know, that's kind of an interesting thing that what does happen like when you have such a tropical depression coming in? What do the animals do? What's the animals do? Yeah, I don't know. Hunker down too, I guess. I would think so. But yeah. Uh, yeah. But anyways, you know, kind of itching to get out in the woods. Me too. I'm ready to get fired up. This week's going to be busy for me, getting uh, clothing ready, making sure all my gear's ready to go. That's what I'm going to be doing. Shooting the bow, um, shooting uh, the the new crossbow. Uh, I'm not going to be using it this week, but uh, getting that out and uh, and getting that thing sighted in as well. I'll tell you what, exactly what I'm going to be doing uh, this week is uh, I talked with Kelly because she's going to go up for a few days too. So we're going to take inventory. Gotcha. Start the washing process and figure out who's got what. and right. Do I need anything? <laughs> yeah. Who's wearing? I don't think so. Stay tuned. But, <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, it's uh, this week is uh, prep week, then the following week, and then we're out of here for a week. Right on. I'm yep. ready for it. Yep, I'm right there with you, man. Uh, I can't wait, man. My pops is going to come up and my uncle, and, and we're going to hit the woods for hopefully nine days. I mean, that's the plan. Uh, you know, hopefully I get a chance to fill a tag before they get up here. That That's a, a possibility. I'm not going to hunt real hard next weekend. I, I still got a couple 
tree stands I need to trim shooting lanes on. And oh, okay. It, you know, so this gonna, it's going to be a little work during the day after I hunt the morning. Has anybody been hunting up at your camp? No. Nobody's been hunting? Okay. Nope. Not a, not a lake. So just, you... just a bear hunter. We had one hunter in camp, a bear hunter. Has he been successful? No. Bear have turned nocturnal. Um, every bear that's coming in is coming in at night, and it's been that way since season started. They've really? Had, they've got an on-trail camera, one bear that moved at like 4 in the afternoon. Other than that, there's been nothing. Really? Yeah, it's really strange. I was just about to ask you, why do you think that might happen? I don't know. I mm-hmm. honestly don't know. It's been warm. You know, it's been it has been extraordinarily warm this year. But you'd think we're heading into the winter time, they'd be on a, on a feeding feed. binge yeah. mode. Well, you know, and it could be other bear hunters in nearby clubs. I don't know. You know, what? I was just about to, my my second part of that question would be: Do you think there's added pressure hunting pressure sent in the woods? I don't know. I know there's been a lot of activity on our property. Um, unfortunately, that uh, there's been some stuff going on. So right, but that, you know that I don't know if that's led to it or not. I mean, when I was up there working on my blind. Um, that was one thing I was really cautious of is where this guy was hunting and how close he was to me and, and you know, making sure that I didn't do anything to uh, disturb that person. You know? Right, exactly. And that's so. just being a, a courteous thing. But I don't think I don't think it would turn him nocturnal. No, no, I, I don't know. I, if I, not, I, anything inquisitive might be. Right, yeah. I just, I don't know. Uh, you know, they, they started uh, cutting baits back and pulling baits in, in the evening. And, you know, that, that's one trick that we've used in the past is, Okay, you want to go nocturnal? We'll just we'll we'll pull the bait. You yep. Know, you get done hunting in the evening, you take it with you. Yep. And then it's like, come out the that. next morning yeah. and put bait, start training them. That it's only going to be here during the day. Yeah, but that hasn't uh, hasn't changed. Oh, them, that so. kind of stinks. I was hoping to maybe get a report that somebody got something. Yeah. Well, I haven't heard of anything in the last couple of days, so maybe you know. Um, I think yeah, they're into their their rifle season now up there. I think so. Glad I didn't put in for bear tag this year, so uh, saved myself a little money and, and effort and all that. So absolutely. But uh, no, we're gonna get ready to head up, and uh, you know, you know, we've been talking a lot about getting ready. Uh, we've been talking about archery seasons out here and things of that nature. But uh, I got an interesting message uh, this past week from Did you? One, from one of our listeners. All right, hit me from Junior Johnson. Was it a good? Hold on. Was it a good message? Yeah, it was a good message. Okay, and and, and this we, is not Junior Johnson, the former race car driver. Oh, <laughs> so unless he's unless he's got a different profile picture and he's hiding on me or oh, something. He might be. But actually, I think that Junior Johnson passed away unfortunately a while back. So, but uh, his question was, uh, he says that he's new to deer hunting. Uh, Mr. Johnson says I'm new to deer hunting. Grew up hunting anything with wings, ducks, goose, pheasant, dove, quail, etc. With dad and grandpa. Sounds like a good upbringing to me sounds like a wing shooter to me right he says uh but but still self uh, but self-teaching how to hunt deer so uh he, he's kind of going through the the process kind of like mara has is right. taught herself you know how to hunt deer so uh but he says today was his first time taking a climbing tree stand out it occurred to him he said or it occurred to me he says when it's time to go home how much time effort noise reduction and care etc do most hunters put into leaving a, a spot Sounds silly. Never thought about it myself, he says, but once back on the ground, hungry, tired, thirsty, being eaten alive by mosquitoes, my patience ran out quicker than I would like to admit. So, in other words, how much how much effort and time and, and quietness and stealth and all that do we put into leaving a stand, so to speak? So, we're going to answer that question here on the show. Uh, but before we get there, why don't we just take our first break, because I think it's a two-part question myself. I think so, too. And uh, we'll come back and we'll answer that. And we're also going to have a special guest on here later on tonight. So we'll be right back after this. I shoot PSE because I like one pin to 40 yards. I shoot PSE for the perfect combination of feel and performance. I shoot PSE because you can shoot lighter poundage and increase arrow speed. I shoot PSE for the fastest bows on the planet. I shoot PSE because my livelihood depends on my bow. I shoot PSE because better engineering makes a better bow. I shoot PSE. I shoot PSE. I shoot PSE. I shoot PSE. Experience PSE. Experience performance. We know the future of hunting depends on our nation's youth. But did you know that in many states, it's illegal for you to take your son or daughter hunting until the age of 12 or even older? As a result, we have fewer young hunters, and the Families of Field program is designed to eliminate those barriers. Hunting is safe, and the safest hunters of field are young people with adult mentors. 
Visit our website at familiesafield.org to find out how you can bring more families afield. Welcome back, second segment of the show. I'm sure glad we don't have a question that we have to explain ourselves as to why we screwed up. It's always good. What are you talking about? I don't know. Just a phrase that we're going to get one of those questions. And oh, and, why? Oh, why we missed a deer or something like that? Yeah. Okay, I got you. Well, you know, it's uh, I've been there. I've, I've made. Oh yeah. You know. All right. So, how do you want to handle this question? All right. Well, I, I say okay. We need to answer the question about getting away from the tree stand, but I want to start getting to the tree stand. Let's do that because. You know, now, you can start. Well, let's just take you're, elder. You're, you're 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 an elder to me, so I'll let you go first. Oh, okay, we're gonna go that route, huh? Yeah, playing the age the age card again here. Absolutely. Are we? All right. So here it is. Okay, to me it depends on w- what style of hunting I'm doing, and but nine times out of ten, this time of year, I'm definitely hunting it out of a out of a ladder stand. Okay, I was gonna say let, let let's mm-hmm. let's do it. Let's say we're bow hunting. Okay. Um, are, are we assuming the ladder stands already put up and he, he's using a climber. He's already got his tree picked out. He's, he's got trimmed back and uh, everything's maybe. trimmed and see, that's the problem I'm at right now is I don't have everything trimmed on all my stands. I got some ready to go. Okay. So let's go with, you're going to be up there this weekend. You trim yep. it all up. You're ready to go. So in the following week, you're up there and I'm going to go out. Okay. Yep. First thing I'm doing, I'm looking at wind direction. Number one. Uh, in the weather, figuring out, okay, where am I going to hunt? What, what's going to lead best to, uh, the, the sets that I got. And I've got different sets put out to where I can hunt, you know, different wind conditions. That way I don't get busted. Hopefully if, you know, if it's, if it's, you got a little breeze blowing, I try to play all my cards. So when I, I set something up, I also try to set up an approach and am I, you know, am I going to have to come in across a food plot? Am I going to go down the edge of a field? Am I coming down a two track and stepping into the woods? You know, I try to stay off deer trails. I don't want to go through a bedding area. You know, I, I try to plan all those things out to where my approach is as quiet and scent free as possible um, when I get to the stand. You know, and, and my approach getting into the stand is just as stealthy. I mean, and I think that goes with anybody. You, you try to get in as quietly as possible. You know, making sure that uh, you know your your gear is quiet, your your boots are quiet, your your you're not hitting limbs and things of that nature, but do you, you're laughing. What's up? No, no, no. I so out of your. We're gonna assume you're gonna be in a tree stand, right? Yeah. And you have a rope hanging down from the tree stand, right? Yeah. To pull up your bow. Yep. Is it a bare ended rope or is there anything on it? Um, let me think. I know all mine are bare ended. Okay. I don't put a carabiner on the end because I don't want to click. I don't want it tick, ticking against the a cam or part of my bow. I don't want it ticking and making a metal noise against the ladder or a limb i've seen a lot of those ropes to help you up have that and exactly the carabiner i can guarantee you you'll hear the click yep that's a sure thing and then uh depending as you know none of my stands we're all pretty much but it's still it scrapes up through the 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 limbs Mm -hmm. but do you trim the limbs back to where you can pull your bow up quietly you put if if you pull it up the front of the tree stand, you're okay. You're okay. 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 So okay. So okay. Well, let me ask you this: your rope, the end that's down at the ground, does it touch the ground or is it hanging up off the ground? Do you have it the right length when you make a knot on your bow that your bow can hang without touching the ground? I I lay my stuff. Our ropes lay. We lay our stuff on the ground, tie it up, and then pull it up. Okay. It doesn't hang free. free short. Like, it doesn't hang short. Mine hang short, but I tie them to my stand. So they're not flapping right. Away. Exactly that, you know, that way it's not drawing attention. There's an area. There's a a, a tree stump kind of a tree right. branch stump. We can tie it off so it isn't gotcha in the wind. Okay, when you get it up in the air and you get your bow, do you let it back down or nope. do you tie it off on something? We we pull it all up and we tuck it under in behind the tree stand. Okay, gotcha. All right, keeping mi- movement to a minimum. Trying to. Yep. Gotcha. Okay, that's good. No, it, we we think a lot alike. Okay. So so okay so now my the the tree stand I'm referencing. I go up from behind and I kind of come into the tree, into the stand. Okay, you climb up over top. Yes. Okay. Whereas yours, since you're using the ladder stands, you're yep. right in the front. I don't use hang-ons, man. I just I, I'm done with them. Um, I won't say I'll never use one, but uh, I do have a climber. I've never used it. Actually, it's my dad's. He's used it in the past. It's just something I have. I've never used one, so I don't I don't know. I I gotta think that would make some noise. That's just me. I don't know. I'm not experienced with that. Okay, so. <laughs> 
past experience before they what they came out with today to get on your boots was the old style had the platform and you had the seat and you kind of scoot yourself up. Mm-hmm. The potential for your boots to come out of the straps and watch your bottom drop off and you had, all the way back yeah. down. Yeah, been there, done that. Really? Fun. How'd you get down? Yeah, luckily I wasn't that far off. I could just, in, 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 I had to put myself through the the which would have been the seat, mm-hmm. and it was only like a, a two foot drop. I didn't get that far up. Okay, it wasn't like you were fifteen twenty feet exactly. Straight. Okay, so um, but uh, yeah, I, I'm not. That's what like I've always climber. yeah. That's what I've always been afraid of. Is like what happens if that thing goes down? You you're, you're hung up, hung out to dry. You are literally, or get you, wet if it's raining, <laughs> or hunt. You're gonna. Hug that tree and slide down it. Right, right. So, because, and but I also don't like them because to climb up, you have to trim all the branches that you're climbing up. Right, it's a slick tree. And if you don't have, if that's virtually your only tree for cover, yeah, you just cut all your cover out. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I've never liked that for that reason. I didn't like that either. But. So okay, so you get so this year though, are you gonna be using the bike? Um, next week I will be for sure. Yeah, that's the plan. Um, you know, and I I didn't think this process through very well. Okay. Because <laughs> I'm thinking, okay, yeah, I got the bike. You know, I've been riding. I'm I'm ready to go. Yada yada. And now it's like, okay, well, if the kids go, how are they going to get out? And I'm like, oh, are you going to yeah. have to buy one of those uh, things I see where the the people pull the kids along? No, no, we'll, we'll walk out. Oh, okay. We'll walk at that point. No, and I've walked out in the past. I mean, I I, I do a lot of walking. Um, I don't like driving. I mean, once once uh, you know the chaos starts of rifle season and everything going on, it, it, I usually walk. Or I used to walk a lot, and there's just been times I'm like, you know what, everybody else is driving. You know what, it, it ain't gonna make any difference, and I just drive so, and park short, and it's because it's all it's all at that point messed up anyway. So exactly. So I'm probably gonna be hunting. I usually hunt from a ground blind. Mm-hmm. It depends, but it's mostly a ground blind. Um, so with that, you get to your tree stand, you hook up, and you climb up, and then you pull everything up. Mm-hmm. Whereas... Well, actually, back up just a little bit before I get there. Depending on the temperature, I may or may not have all my gear on. There's times that I, I won't have all my gear on because normally walking. This year I'll be biking and, and for the same reason. Sweat, you know, uh, per, per, perspiration. <laughs> I can't yep. say that where I'm just tired tonight. But uh, creating that that body heat and then that scent, you know, that's the one thing I do worry about. So I try to stay as cool as possible and I'll stop short. And especially with the bike, I'll stop short. I've already got my places picked out where I'm going to stop and get dre- finish getting dressed, you know, my, my okay. coat, you know, what have you, whatever gear I got to put on and then make my approach in from there. Okay. So that's something I do as well. See, what I'd do is I'd go in, get into my blind, and then I like to just, I'm pretty much unzipped everywhere i can be Mm -hmm. and then i'll just sit there cool off be quiet for a while just i'll get stuff out say of course you're in pitch black right okay Mm -hmm. i'm putting this over there somewhere Mm -hmm. and then uh yeah i'll I'll sit there and i'll let the woods get of course to us it sounds like we just a herd of elephants just came through right um but yeah i'll sit there and i'll let the woods quiet down Mm -hmm. and 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 sometimes depending on how it's going it, it won't take but that long and then i'll start to hear the woods waking up waking up with uh usually the, the, they'll be coming through or, or i've had that happen where i've basically sat down and all of a sudden there's deer there's, you can hear deer walking right by you and you're like yeah okay <laughs> yeah that didn't take long yeah exactly so i just i when that happens i always just picture in my mind them looking at me coming through the woods going what are you doing right so but totally agree they're going in uh, stealth as can be depends. Sometimes I like to, uh, just before I, I, cause the blind is on the top of a knoll uh, at the other, I go back down and I come up a little bit. I'll stop there and I'll listen and see what I can hear or can't hear before you get all the way in. Yep. Yeah. See if I'm pushing something yeah. or I'm here or what's going on. So you take your time and, and not just a constant steady motion, get into the blind. You, 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 you get to a point and you stop, listen, check yep. everything take a second and then then approach right okay all right yeah I'm, I'm kind of that same you know mindset i mean it depends it depends on the weather depends on how cold i am you know if i'm if i'm trying to maintain a little body heat and keeping that steady pace but i'm still listening you know i've got my my beanie cap as i always wear a beanie i don't wear a brimmed hat or anything i like to have a beanie on my head and i've always got it up over my ears so i can hear yep 
You know, that's that's the key thing for me is is trying to listen as much as possible um, and being as quiet as possible. But okay, let, let's let's turn the tables here. We got just about uh, a little less than four or five minutes here. Let's turn the tables back the other way now. Coming back out, the evening hunt's done. It's dark. You've let your bow down. Hold on. Do you have deer in? If I've got deer in, I don't leave till the deer leave. Okay. I, I've actually sat out quite a while. My dad's wondered, is he okay? You know, and we'll meet each other on the path because he's come back out looking for me. He's like, well, where you been? I'm like, well, I had deer under me. No, I, I, I don't want to bust deer at all if I'm in a stand because once they know you're, th- then it's like, okay, oh, that, that's what that is up there. <laughs> yeah. Dump, dump, dum. You know, you're busted. So no, I, I'll wait until deer clear. Um, I've done a couple little things to kind of get deer to move out. You know, if I'm in a, in a tree, then I got a you know a little stick or an acorn or something like that. You know, I'll take and I'll flick it like people will flick a cigarette butt. Yep. You know, I'll just take and flick it out in the middle of something so, it, you know, it hits the ground and they'll just kind of look at it, you know, and you know how deer get. They get skittish. And they move off. And it's like, okay, all right, I'll, I'll just mosey along, you know, but I won't do anything purposely to make them scatter. Right. So. I've had deer in and it's gotten dark and it's like, well, I can't see you and you. Mm-hmm. So I'll start to, to get out mm-hmm. and sometimes they just stay there. Mm-hmm. And they, as soon as they start going the other way, they're like, okay. Mm-hmm. But sometimes they've busted, and, mm-hmm. but uh, it, it all depends. Uh, so either way, it's happened. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't make it a habit to to bust them out on, under a stand. But I have stayed there too. So, so let's say we get out. There's no deer. We get down on the ground. Do you have an approach getting getting out? Uh, my approach on getting out is making sure I have everything, and then I usually don't. I pretty much should be able to see the trail anyways. So I was I say, do you use a light? I, I won't use a flashlight because uh, if I'm hunting by my, if I'm in my sp- area by myself, uh, I know the trail to get back. So I should probably shouldn't need a flashlight. Mm-hmm. Uh, if I'm hunting with my cousin who usually hunts, we hunt together. Uh, we have a meeting spot at the top of the hill. Okay. So I'll get back to that spot and then I'll just wait, get quiet. And, do you, uh, do you leave just as quietly as you approach? Because that's the crux to his. I, I, uh, uh, I want to say Junior Johnson's question here. I try not to make an exorbitant amount of noise. Yeah, I guess in a way, yes. Yeah, I don't. I, I guess I really never paid attention. I, I do. I go out as stealthy as I come in, and I just, I just quietly, and I won't strip out of gear, extra gear. I mean, oh no, 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 until I'm way away from the stand. No, 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 you know, because no, no. the same thing is wearing scent, scent clothes. You know, scent free clothing. I, 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 if it's warm and I'm generating body heat, I'll start to strip out, you know, take my coat off. And if I've got a hoodie on, uh, my scent lock hoodie on underneath that, I'll take that off. You know, I'll get down to, uh, yeah. to my base layer and then, you know, my pants, I'll, I'll, usually it's a ch- like a chest style zip up and I'll unzip that all the way. Right. When I get back, if, if I'm meeting at the, I'll get back to the meeting spot and as I'm waiting for him, mm-hmm. that's when I'll, yeah, I'll okay. start taking off the, the stuff, putting it away, switching to my other stuff that I got. But, uh, um, I, I want to say, I, I guess I, I don't leave in a, in a, in a rush. I just what if there's of, snow on the ground? If there's snow on the ground, uh, do you, do you just trudge out? I just, or do you try to go stealthy and even I, in snow, even in snow, it's a little bit quieter in snow, but you can see a little bit longer. Yeah. But usually cause I'm on the edge of the swamp anyways, it gets darker faster. Right. And I'm like, okay, it's dark out. Okay. So now let's take it a, little, a step further. You get out and you're, uh, let's say you're between, how far is it from your meeting place to your stand? 50 yards 50 yards oh it's pretty close yeah I'm at, I'm at i'm on another i'm on the next hill over okay i got you all right well out to the road um the two track for mine is probably 70 80 yards um to the nearest two track depending on which way i go out oh okay from from the stand i'm thinking about the my new my new spot um even on the two track i'm i'm quiet um and if i if i see deer in a f- like in a food plot one of the food oh, yeah, plots okay, I'm, pa- yeah. I'm passing i stand still don't move because i don't want to bust them out of the food plot either i want the deer on the whole on the property as a whole to be as, feel as safe and secure as possible i don't you know that's one reason why i don't drive the property during hunting season i try to stay off the roads you know i try to walk in and be quiet as possible it's, it's the same coming out I, I want the the whole area to be as quiet as I possibly can and, and not alert them to my presence, even even in the evening coming out. Um, the only right. time I might not is if I got a deer down and I'm going I'm going out to recover. Obviously, you're going to make some noise. Yep. Um, or it's the last hunt of the season, you know, and I'm wrapping everything up at that point. Oh, if like, it's the last hunt of the season, that's a different story. You're right. It's like, okay, all right, game over. We're done. Yeah. You know, tag lunch. Let's go home. Yep, take my so, tag lunch and go home, right? It, it just... 
But um, I guess going out pretty much the same way going in, you know, maybe not as slow going out. Yeah. But once I get to my meeting spot, then I just sit up there and usually watch the moon or something. And yeah. when my cousin starts to come out, I'll, I'll I, it, depending on how dark it is, I might catch his light coming through or, right. or I'll hear him bust deer coming through. And Do you ever uh, sit and play jokes on each other? Like whoever gets there first, you try to scare him? No, not really. Oh, I've done that during bow season, not during gun season. Yeah, <laughs> don't do it during gun season. Uh, no, but no, no. but uh, you know, I might sit back off two track, and, and I've done this with with people I've hunted with before. You know, and you sit back and you watch them, and they're standing there for a second, and all of a sudden, you know, pick up a stick or something, throw it out there, and you see them turn around and look, and then I'll whistle at them, <laughs> like ha ha ha, very funny. Yeah, <laughs> you know, no, no, don't do that. So. It just it's one of those things. But uh, no, it, then we take the two track out. And usually the, the two track is pretty quiet. Yeah. Have you, ever, have you ever just sat real still in your spot, waiting for them to approach and it's dark and seeing if they see you? Oh, yeah. Letting them get as close as they can before they see you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It, it, that's it, it's kind of a, a, just real quick off subject. Uh, he has a pair of uh, moss yoke tree stand rubber boots. Uh-huh. And for some reason, I, the, the tree stand pattern on those boots are almost like all white. Okay. Yep. So I can watch him, and I'll pick up his boots before anything. Is, okay. And I'm like, oh, okay, that's him. He's coming. Yeah. <laughs> All right. But yeah, no, that's, that's kind of a good question. Yeah, it was a real good question. Um, so yeah, I just in a nutshell, yeah, I leave. I try to leave as stealthy as I go in. Um, you know, it it just there's there's other variables that that factor in, but for the most part, yeah, I always try to leave my area um, as as unobtrusive as I entered it. Especially I, especially if we're if, like you said. If we're in the beginning of the hunt all the way almost, unless it's the end of the hunt. Right. Gotcha. Gotcha. Like you said, it's the end of the hunt. We're done. We're getting out. We're going to probably head back and pack anyways. And right. And just it's probably tag soup anyhow. Gotcha. All right. Well, I tell you what, let's take our next break, step outside. We're going to try to make a quick phone call here and see let's if we can get it. somebody on the line here. So uh, we'll be right back after this. So what do you do when you've completely redefined the way bows are engineered? When you've reached the pinnacle and the band starts playing your victory song, you start a revolution out of thin air. Introducing the all-new PSE Carbon Air, engineered with true carbon technology to be the lightest high-performance bow in the world. Experience PSE. Experience performance. We know the future of hunting depends on our nation's youth. But did you know that many states... It's illegal for you to take your son or daughter hunting until the age of 12 or even older. As a result, we have fewer young hunters, and the Families of Field program is designed to eliminate those barriers. Hunting is safe, and the safest hunters of field are young people with adult mentors. Visit our website at familiesoffield.org to find out how you can bring more families of field. Welcome back to the next segment of the show, and we've made a phone call, and we have actually got somebody on the line. Dan, tell yeah, us. Yeah, we do. You know, it's just not somebody. Come it, on. It, it, it is somebody. Yeah, that could be anybody. It, it, it's, well, it's a special person, special it, guest. Well, it's a it, it's a successful guest. On top of that, too, yes. I know. Uh, fresh off a early morning, um, well-placed shot, uh, the one and only Jerry Lambert. Hey, Jerry. How's it going, man? Good, good day. How y'all doing? Uh, we're doing great, but it sounds like you're doing a lot better than we are. You've actually been in the woods. I had a really good day today. In fact, a really good weekend. I uh, had an article in uh, Woods and Water News talking about uh, October bucks, hunting hungry October bucks, and I just got my uh, and I just got a buck early October again and. One thing we look for is early cold fronts, and one just came in. I knew it was going to be a week, a good weekend, and uh, it worked out well for me. Man, has the temperature dropped or what? It, it has gotten nice. Well, you know, like most hunters, I got a circle of friends, and we were all like, oh, man, this is going to be the weekend. And, uh, in fact, a friend of mine, Dan Cermak, shot one up in uh, the Pinky area up in, I think it's Leedlinaw County. Okay. He shot one up there, a six point, and we were seeing a lot of sightings and just knew this was going to be a productive weekend. And I saw a lot of deer up on their feet. So it, it was, it was very, very fun weekend to be outside. So, so was it because of the cold fronts or the, 
or your other article were uh, they're hungry. They're hungry. Well, I think both the cold front gets them up on their feet, and then I was hunting uh, where acorns were falling, and uh, the deer seemed to be headed that way. I saw deer quite a bit uh, during the daylight hours, uh, all parts of the day. Uh, Saturday, and then went out today, which is Sunday morning, and uh, got the buck at 8 o'clock. So it's an hour after uh, daylight, you know. And he was still on his feet. And, you know, up until the cold front, most of my pictures of bucks were at night. So the cold front helps get them on their feet, is my opinion. Okay, very nice. I think it's a very well-documented opinion mm-hmm. now that you got yeah, pictures of yeah, an yeah. eight-point you got holding <laughs> in your hands. <laughs> but you know what? Th- this is a, a beautiful-looking deer. Um you shot it at eight this morning. Um, it says you saw some small bucks. Yeah, uh, yesterday I was hunting that same stand. It's a good morning stand. It's where I got my buck last year in October. I got that one. I believe it was October twentieth, if I remember. Uh, it's in between two cornfields. There's a big swamp that they head into to bed, and I'm in like a staging area of uh, various hardwoods, and it's also near a pond, which I feel is very important in the early season because. Deer and turkey. I saw a bunch of. I saw a flock of gobblers go get a drink. And uh, yesterday morning, I had two bucks. Talk about the cold front. Two bucks sparring underneath my stand. A little eight point and a, a tall four point. They were sparring underneath my stand and and harassing this group of does. They went through, and then uh, two more separate bucks went through. And last night, I was hunting the edge of a cornfield in a swap because bucks seem to like to cruise up and down those edges and sure enough a uh, seven point that i let pass uh went underneath and then this morning like i said an hour after first light this big mature buck come in and uh put a shot on it it made a death run and 50 yards and toppled over dead so uh yeah it's just a wonderful weekend to get out i imagine you're gonna hear a lot more success stories after once this weekend people start reporting their successes you know what? That's awesome. So, how far was the shot? He was about between. Well, it's hard to estimate when they're way out there, but ten or eleven yards. <laughs> way, way out there! Wow, yeah. man, pushing he that effective was way range out there. <laughs> he didn't have a clue you were there, did he? He did not. I seen him for just a second. You know, this that's the other thing. This time of year, there's so much foliage. I'm like, oh, there's a buck. And he started heading down this lane towards the pond, which is away from me. And I was like, well, I'll try Grunty Man. I was like, wait, wait. He also he made me turn. He came in. So I did the, oh, he got behind a big tree. I drew back. He stepped out from the tree. And I let the arrow go. And I got to tell you, man, that arrow, I used the rage broad head, went all the way through uh, both lungs. And, you know, from that height, it went straight down through both of them. And, uh I think it cut an artery going into the heart too anyways he just takes off on a death sprint and uh this is outdoor radio so we can talk about stuff like this right that's right and uh he just falls on his chest uh, i think you've seen videos of that i think that actually of all my deer i've showed this is the first one that's actually done that where his legs just kept giving out and he just kept going down on his chest he was just and he was just snow plowing 50 i mean he was sprinting and he hit 50 yards and he head first into a tree and bounced and I think he just died on his feet. Oh, <laughs> and man. The momentum yeah. took him into the tree, and he fell over. Wow. And I thought, oh, my goodness, is there going to be a rack left? Right. Well, nice. <laughs> since I am an outdoor writer and I utilize a lot of pictures, I, I usually, you know, take the tongue, put it back in the mouth, because dead deer have their tongue out, so for picture. And I t- got some water, cleaned his face off. Well, I got, I'm like, what's up with his jaw? His jaw's just hanging. Oh, he broke his jaw running into the tree. Oh. <laughs> so I did some creative photography and kind of kind of uh, uh, adjusted the photo so the jaw wasn't in the pictures because yeah. it, it, uh, it's a mess. <laughs> man, so that's man. creative photography. Right yeah, there. I'm looking at the picture right now. Man, look at the neck on that guy. He is. Oh, he's a, a big buck. He's a beast. He's a brute. Uh, were you able to age him? You know, it's hard to say. Uh, he he could be as young as a t- two and a half year old. He, he could be a three. I don't think he's much older than that. So it's hard to tell if he's a two and a half, three and a half year old. Yeah. I, I don't, you know, I can put him in those two year categories. I, I don't put complete confidence and put him in one category. Right. You know, I have a lot of people say, that's a 3.5, you know, that's a three and a half year old just by how big he is and stuff. But I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, he's a nice deer. That, that's the bottom line. 
Now, and this is a yeah, Southern yeah. Michigan buck, correct? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Uh, Southern Michigan. Okay. Southern Very Michigan. Nice. Yeah. Look at all the green that's behind them there. I know. Look at all that green. It, it looks like turkey season out there. <laughs> you getting uh, you getting yeah. acorn drops down there now, and and trees starting to turn down by you. Uh, the acorns are just starting to drop enough to get the get them in the woods, and okay. uh, there's just a slight turn in the color. Okay. Uh, but man, I tell you what, nothing like cold fronts. And uh, and then my article about hungry October bucks, I did not mention that because you know you only have so much space, and we 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 hunted over acorns, and and this time of year, if you find a green soybean field, mm-hmm. you know most of them are brown, but my my brother Jeff shot a monster ten point last year because. He uh, found a green soybean field. It was planted very, very late, and also there's a row of apple trees. So, you know, they hammer the apples, the green soybeans, a uh, nice alfalfa field, or once the acorns start dropping. So so, so you're, 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 you're hunting close to farm. Uh, is the corn still up? Yeah, corn is still up. In fact, I got a picture of a beautiful eight-point. Uh, I mean, he's just a regal-looking buck, huge body. And I thought maybe this one was it and just busted its horn. And uh, then I realized, no, that one just, I, and for the people who can't see the picture, I uh, the buck I shot is a big four-point on one side. And then the other side's a huge brow tine with just a like a beam coming out, going off sideways. And uh, it just kind of, there. you see where one part was broken, but it kind of grew uh, it just kind of, you know, was went out shorted on one side. Uh, but I say all of that cause I thought maybe that was that big a point. So he's still out there and I didn't even have this one on camera and I got what I would consider four shooters on this farm. And I want to add, this is a farm. I got permission by knocking on doors. Oh, you, you know, got like hunt that. My, I hunt private properties. I hunt property I own. But this farm's close to my house. I went and knocked on doors, and uh, it, it still can be done. You know, for those you know, who want to put the work in. I am, I am actually glad to hear that, because I'm hearing so much of people going knocking on doors, and all they want to do is charge you an arm and a leg. Mm-hmm. And, and rightly so, it's, it's it's their property. It's their property, but it's like not like the old days when you used to try to go and make me work out a deal where you'll help them on the farm if you can hunt the farm. Right, right. So that is good to hear. What yeah, you know, I mean, I own my own property, but it, it's like 30, 35 minutes from where I live. And, uh, you know, I coach volleyball. I have two kids. I want to I, I wanna be able to hunt more. And I've, I've been one of those guys that will hunt almost every night. So I was like, I got to get a place right near me where I live. And I approached a few of the bigger farms. And this guy first, uh, I approached for turkey season a number of years ago. He said, no, I have turkey hunters, but leave your number. And later in the season, he goes, okay, they got their turkeys. Uh, you want to come on out? Sure. I was very respectful. Uh, became friends with the guy. And uh, he goes, well, what? You want to come out here and shoot some deer, too? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. Well, I, I think I can do that for you. <laughs> yeah, I like that. So, and, and tell you the truth, I only bow hunt it, and it gets hammered by gun hunters. But by look at my camera this year, there's a lot of big bucks there. So, Sounds you know, like it. it if you put the work in, you know, and part of the thing is, though, I have these great bucks. I have to shoot them by November 14th or I have to move on. But, you know, it's a great spot and it's paid off the last two Octobers. That's awesome. So I hope, hopefully some of your listenership will get encouragement off that. Absolutely. Did uh, did you have frost this morning when you went out down that far? No. Okay. Nope. We didn't have, we did not have frost. Right. In fact, it was. It's only about forty degrees. I love that forty degree weather. It's very comfortable, <laughs> and if you and when you get this time of year, you know it feels cold, so the bucks are up on their feet. Right. So, oh, absolutely. The, the, I think the best temperatures is thirty five to forty five. Yeah. It, it, oh, that's cool. Crisp morning. Stuff. Oh, that is nothing better than that. And like you said, a nice, beautiful sunrise. Yep. I go for that. Does everywhere. the soul good. Does the soul good? Yeah, it does. Well, I tell you what, let's uh, let's step outside real quick. We we'll take our next break. When we come back. We'll finish up here, and uh, and we got a question for you that we'd like to run by you as well, uh, Jerry, if you don't mind. So uh, sounds great. All righty, we'll be right back after this. The 2015 Dream Season Decree is a deadly combination of speed and precision. It's built for the moments when time stands still. When the only thing that will break the silence is an arrow slicing a clean path to the kill zone. The bow of your dreams is a nightmare for big game. This is PSE's decree. Experience PSE. Experience performance. 
We know the future of hunting depends on our nation's youth. But did you know that in many states, it's illegal for you to take your son or daughter hunting until the age of 12 or even older? As a result, we have fewer young hunters, and the Families of Field program is designed to eliminate those barriers. Hunting is safe, and the safest hunters of field are young people with adult mentors. Visit our website at familiesoffield.org to find out how you can bring more families afield. Welcome back, everybody. Last segment of the show. We still have Jerry Lambert on with us tonight. Uh, we just talked about a, a great story on an early season buck. Are you going to uh, – I got a question. Are, did you take it in to process it, or do you process it yourself? You know, I took this one in to process. I, I, I do both. I process. Okay. I take them in. Uh, because of the warm weather, uh, I had to get a boy back to college. Uh, I coached volleyball. I didn't have the time to process, you know, I can't let it hang for a couple of days. It got warm today. So I took this one to a processor. Okay. Yeah. You know, I know the, the, the parenting thing seems to be getting in the way of hunting. I totally agree with that. Right on. <laughs> yep. You know, Mike, Mike had senior pictures it, today. Yeah. And, you know, isn't it funny how life gets in the way of hunting? Strange how that yes, works. Yes. And the funny thing is, so we take Noah back to U of M and I'm, and, and I'm on his campus. I'm thinking, I'm probably the only guy that shot a buck in a pot on this campus today. <laughs> you probably the only guy different world there. You think? Yeah. You're probably the only yeah. guy that went hunting. Yeah, right on. Amen yeah. to that. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, but, you know, before we got you on the phone tonight, uh, Dan and I, we had a question from, from one of our listeners. And uh, we, we answered it. And, you know, I thought, you know, you're an experienced hunter. So we're going to pose this question to you and, uh, and kind of see how, how you approach things, Jerry. Um, but uh, what we've got is uh, one of our listeners named Junior Johnson. He asked us, he, he's a self-taught hunter. This is really his first year in the field deer hunting, and he's using a climbing stand. And as he is he's coming down, it dawned on him. He's like, should I leave my stand uh, the same way I approached it, you know, in a stealth mode, or do I just, you know, kind of go out and not worry about it? You know, he ended his question, he says, uh, he says, it sounds silly. He says, never really thought about it. But once I'm back on the ground, I'm hungry, tired, thirsty, being eaten alive by mosquitoes. My patience ran out quicker than I'd like to admit. So when you're in the stand, you know, and it's nightfall, and, or maybe even during the day, and you've got to get back to your truck and head home, how do you, how do you approach or how do you combat leaving that stand? Uh, yes, I do like to leave quiet, just like I like to approach quiet. Uh, on the land that we own and have uh, access to to manipulate the way we do, we like to brush hog lanes even uh, to minimize noise and to minimize scent distribution. Mm -hmm. So if I have a lane I can walk on where the grass is only ankle high rather than walking through weeds, uh, that helps. So we, we think a lot of our success, when I say we, me and my brothers, we're kind of like a team and we do pretty well and hunt every year, uh, is ver planning our entry and exit to and from stands. And to further answer his question, I have a, like a stand I went to last night, uh, I kind of talked about in the first segment, where it separate, it's a swap in a uh, cornfield, and I have to walk along the cornfield quite a bit. And one thing I've started doing because when a human walks, it sounds a lot like a turkey's cadence. Mm -hmm. Turkeys will walk in the same cadence. So I'll take a little turkey call and just kind of cluck at it as I walk. So if the deer aren't smelling me and all they're hearing is that noise, a lot of times they won't bolt with just the noise. And they have something to associate that walking noise with. The turkey, they're, you know, mm -hmm. I, I don't know how much a deer reasons, but I'm thinking they're saying, oh, that's those darn turkeys. And they'll stay batted so I can walk by them as long as I, I, I use an approach where they can't set me and get up in the stand. So, so hopefully he, he finds that helpful, too. Not only cover scent and watching your scent control in your, in your, you're using a cover sound, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Yeah. In I fact, like I found it works. Two, two years ago, there's a stand. Uh, it was, in fact, a 
just around the corner in the opposite direction of where I went last night, and it separated the swamp from the different angle in the cornfield. I knew they batted close to where I had to walk by, but there's this uh, thorn bushes on the, on the uh, outskirts of the swamp that covered any sight of me, mm-hmm. and I always waited till the wind was right. But I knew they could hear me, so that's when I started doing it. I'd carry the turkey call and just walk slowly and hit it, and sure enough, you know, a a really good sized buck came in and I missed that buck. My, my hit a branch and deflected it. But, uh, you know, I feel much of the success to that night to getting a shot was, was for that little strategy of using the turkey call. See, now that's, go ahead, go ahead. Well, and I was just going to say a lot of times, even, even if that isn't it, as long as you, the hunter, believe that it worked, <laughs> you know, having confidence when you're out there is half the game right there. You know, it, it's something I was just getting ready to say uh, as well. Is you think a lot of, like I do. It's it's uh, it's playing that game and controlling the things that you can control. Um, and, and whether things work or not, I've always, people say, you know, well, do you have a lucky pair of socks or do you do certain things a certain way? And we become, I, I don't know, I want to say, superstitious but we become repetitious and and if it makes you feel more confident in your hunt you're going to be more successful the way i feel yeah and you know and there's always little tips uh, i don't i now i'm an outdoor writer and i always get a little perturbed when i read these outdoor writers who will use the word should you should always you you know i i don't say should it's an activity deer hunting go have fun but the, i believe there's a lot of tips and things that can help you be more successful for example, I, I share this one. A lot of people don't even think about it. Uh, a lot of times I'll use a decoy in the later seasons, like if the crops are down and I have mm-hmm. a field edge and I know they're coming in, uh, you know, a secluded field, and they can see the decoy. Mm-hmm. Well, what is the nature? Survival of the fittest. Right. So I'll often put only one antler on and a buck every, just cause to direct where I want the buck to come in because they'll come into the weak spot of the buck the side without an antler because that's mm-hmm. a weakness and it helps just put the buck that much further in a place for a good shot so you know those little like tips really help out i think yeah maximizing the things that you that you do have control over and trying to guide yeah. i mean it doesn't always work but, but if you can maximize the game in some way i i the the decoy trick i like that and i like the, um, the turkey call now are you using a mouth call are you using a box call or a pot call. Actually, I use a I use a little finger call, you know, a little, uh, push button trigger. Uh, yeah, push button. So that way I can just take it out of my pocket and just kind of, you know, move my trigger or trigger figure you know, every uh, 20, 30 yards. And I just do a soft clucks, you know. Nice. And, uh, so it just sounds like turkey walking at the edge, picking at the corn. It's simple and and. It's simple. Is yeah, what it, it is. is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's just yeah. another little tool, tool in the, in the toolbox. You know, and that's one thing. Yeah. And, and you know, it's those little things. Like like Jerry said, yeah. should you do it? Well, try it. Yeah. Try Maybe it. it becomes. You know, don't use the word should. Like Jerry said, if you, you enjoy doing it mm-hmm. and it works, do it again. Yeah. You know, and if it's a morning hunt and you're leaving the stand and you try something like that, who knows? You might get a coyote that might. Hey, there's dinner. Yeah, or breakfast, you know, and you might get a crack at a cow. You never know. You never know what what you're going to see when you're out there. You know, <laughs> I've done that. <laughs> you know, it's funny you mentioned that. Yep, I've done that. So, have yep. you seen? Uh, speaking of coyotes, uh, anything on your cams that says this farm has got a lot of coyotes around? Actually, uh, this uh, surprise. I think I have a single picture of a coyote. Now that tells me two things. Uh, maybe it could tell me. Maybe there is as many coyotes. But it also tells me just how slick those things are. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've put cameras out in heavy areas where I know there's a lot of coyotes. I'll hear them every night and only get one picture. You know, they are very amazing animals. If you want the ultimate animal to try to hunt, (laughs) coyotes are incredibly wily. They are tough. And, you know, I I wish I could say the same for our place. It seems like we're covered up with them this year. I've got numerous uh, photos of multiples, um, of of couple with fawns in their mouths, you know, during fawning oh, season. So, no. yeah, it's uh, we we've we've been pretty uh, unfortunate this year is the fact of where we're at. So we're we're on high alert right now for them. 
and they do add another species we can target. <laughs> <There's> Amen. <a> <laughs> that day, right? Like I need another reason to fling an arrow. That's right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so. Exactly. Well, you know, for the for the people who uh, who might not know your whole background here, Jerry. I mean, you mentioned that you, you write for uh, Woods and Water News, uh, which is a, a Michigan publication here that comes out monthly. But you're also uh, an experienced author as well, and you've got a couple books out right now. Why don't you kind of give us a quick run rundown of what you got out there that people can uh, find on their newsstand? Well, yeah, thanks, Mike. Uh, I've got my background in outdoor writing. I released my first book, and I think it was 2011, if I remember right, uh, Trophy White Tales, and the tales is T-A-L-E-S. And uh, that book made it to number two in the outdoor charts, and uh, got a lot of good feedback, so I followed that up with a book called The Hunting Spirit. Uh, that has deer stories, my trip to Africa, elk, turkey, and, and that book did very well. So uh, as a writer, I really like the creative aspects of it. So I wanted to try a novel, and uh, but they say write what you know, and I wanted to keep my close ties to my outdoor uh, roots, per se. So I decided to write a mystery novel, and it's called North of Wrong. I released that early in March. Uh, it's called North of Wrong, and uh, what it is is about a guy who wants to be a deputy, but he thought, hey, if I'm going to be a deputy, why not do it in the best place in the world, up north Michigan? So he goes to up north Michigan to be a deputy in a fictional Algonquin County, and uh, while up there, marijuana farmers infiltrate the public forests and woodlands, and the sheriff calls on the deputy's sportsman skills to help get some of these marijuana farmers who get greedy and resort to murder so it has a big outdoor outdoor theme up north theme and that was very successful and then one other area we really like in the state of michigan is lake michigan so i wrote another book this one's geared more towards young adults called south heaven that one just released a few weeks ago and it takes place in south haven michigan and a couple of the main characters spend the summer chart, uh, running a charter service. So if anyone's interested in a couple of uh, novels that have outdoor writing roots, I've, I've released two books this year, and I appreciate you bringing it up. Where can they find those at? Amazon.com is the best. Uh, or you can go to my Facebook page, Jerry Lambert Author, Jerry Lambert Author page, and I have links there. Or if you are very particular, particular to a favorite bookstore, just go to your bookstore and ask them to order it. They're available through what's called Ingram, and you can order them anywhere. So, But if you want quick access in this quick access world, uh, go to Amazon.com, and you can have the book the next day or in two days. And use your Prime membership, and before you know it, it's sitting in two days <laughs> in your mailbox. <laughs> you have it ready to take to the deer stand. <laughs> you know, that that's simply amazing what they can do now with delivery pretty soon we're gonna have drones really flying dropping them it really <laughs> oh it's it's one of those things that's just amazing technology at its one at its wildest well jerry we thank you for taking uh you know a few moments out of your day to sit and talk with us tonight and, and share stories with us and tell us what's going on in your life it's uh it's always a pleasure to talk to you brother well hey i appreciate hearing from you guys i appreciate the opportunity and i can't wait to Hear how you guys do as the season progresses. No, oh, I'm, hey. I'm itching to get out. I tell you. You know what? If, if if anything, why don't you order a book to take out to the woods? And matter of fact, we got his link on our website as well. Is uh, he can go there, check, go to our website, click on the link, takes you right to Amazon, and you can order the books and have them in time to make it to your deer stand. There you go. Help you pass the time when you're and not I, seeing deer. And I've had a lot of people over the years tell me that's what they do. They read them at the deer stand, and I think that's one of the coolest things ever. So I, I thank read, you. I appreciate that. I read North of Wrong last year when you, you sent us a copy. Um, Dan, he got done with it. I took it to, to deer camp, and when I wasn't watching deer, I was reading. I couldn't put the book down. It's that good. So you guys get out there and check it out for sure. All right, guys. Good well, deal, Mike. What's that? I said good deal. I appreciate that. All right. Well, that'll do it for us this week, folks. We appreciate you checking in. If you guys are getting out in the woods or the water, make sure you shoot straight, be safe, and uh, good luck to you. Just be safe out there, folks. This episode was brought to you by PSE Archery, Black Eagle Arrows, 
Cabela's, Antler Action, Spot Shooter Archery, Tom's Custom Turkey Calls, Family Traditions Tree Stands, and Badass Sling Shots. Thanks for listening, and join us again here next week. Until then, remember, as we always like to say, if you're out on the water or in the woods, shoot straight and be safe until next week on the Up North Journal.